Welcome to this service of Holy Communion for the fifth Sunday after Trinity. Let's just have a moment of quiet. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. We say together our prayer of preparation. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our first hymn is number 582, 582, Rock of Ages, 582. Rock of ages, work for me, let me hide myself in thee, let the water and the blood from thy ravens I wish for be a sin the double cure, save me from Our Lord Jesus Christ said the first commandment is this. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is the only Lord. And you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second commandment is this. Love your neighbour as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Amen. Lord, have mercy. God so loved the world that he gave his only son, Jesus Christ, to save us from our sins, to be our advocate in heaven, and to bring us to eternal life. Let us therefore confess our sins in penitence and faith, firmly resolved to keep God's commandments and to live in love and peace with all. And we say together, 
Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you with eternal life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And we say the Gloria together. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, Heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. And the collect for the fifth Sunday after Trinity. Almighty and everlasting God, by whose Spirit the whole body of the Church is governed and sanctified, hear our prayer which we offer for all your faithful people, that in their calling, vocation, and ministry, they may serve you in holiness and truth to the glory of your name. To our Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. O oh God, you declare your almighty power, most chiefly in showing mercy and pity. Mercy grant to us such a measure of your grace that we, running the way of your commandments, may receive your gracious promises and be made partakers of your heavenly treasure. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our first reading is taken from Ezekiel, chapter 2, beginning at the first verse. The Lord spoke to me, Son of man, stand up on your feet and I will speak to you. As he spoke, the Holy Spirit came into me and raised me onto my feet, and I heard him speaking to me. He said, Son of man, I am sending you to the Israelites, to a rebellious nation that has rebelled against me. They and their forefathers have been in revolt against me to this very day. The people to whom I am sending you are obstinate and stubborn. Say to them, this is what the Sovereign Lord says. And whether they listen or fail to listen, for they are a rebellious house, they will know that a prophet has been amongst them. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our second reading is from 2 Corinthians chapter 12 beginning at verse 2. I know a man in Christ who 14 years ago was caught up to the third heaven. Whether it was in the body or out of the body, I do not know, but God knows. And I know that this man, whether in the body or apart from the body, I do not know, but God knows, was caught up to paradise. He heard inexpressible things, things that man is not permitted to tell. I will boast about a man like that, but I will not boast about myself except about my weaknesses. Even if I should choose to boast, I would not be a fool, because I will be speaking the truth. But I refrain, 
so no one will think more of me than is warranted by what I do or say. To keep me from becoming conceited because of their surpassingly great revelations, there was given me a thorn in my flesh, a messenger of Satan to torment me. Three times I pleaded with the Lord to take it away from me, but he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, I will boast all the more gladly about my weaknesses, so that Christ's power may rest on me. That is why, for Christ's sake, I delight in weaknesses, in insults, hardships, in persecutions and difficulties. For when I am weak, then I am strong. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our next hymn is number 89, 89, Come Down, O Love Divine. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. 
Mark chapter 6, beginning at the first verse. Jesus went to his hometown, accompanied by his disciples. When the Sabbath came, he began to teach in the synagogue, and many who heard him were amazed. Where did this man get these things, they asked? What's this wisdom that has been given him, that he even does miracles? Isn't it the carpenter? Isn't this Mary's son, the brother of James, Joseph, Judas, and Simon? Aren't his sisters here with us? And they took offense at him. Jesus said to them, only in his hometown, among his relatives, his own house is a prophet without honor. And he could not do any miracles there except lay his hands on a few sick people and heal them. And he was amazed at their lack of faith. Then Jesus went round teaching from village to village, calling the 12 to him, he sent them out two by two and gave them authority over evil spirits. These were his instructions. Take nothing for the journey except a staff, no bread, no bag, no money in your belts, wear sandals but not an extra tunic, and whenever you enter a house stay there until you leave that town. And if any place will not welcome you or listen to you, shake the dust off your feet when you leave as a testimony against them. They went out and preached that people should repent. And they drove out many demons and anointed many sick people with oil and they were healed. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Let's bow our heads to pray. May I speak in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and bring glory to you alone. Amen. In our first reading, we hear God speaking directly to Ezekiel through the Holy Spirit. And commissioning him to a very difficult task. And that is speaking the truth directly from God to Israel. And God warns him that they are a rebellious nation and they've turned their back and rebelled against God himself. They're obstinate and stubborn. But whether they listen or they fail to listen, they will know that a prophet has been amongst them. And in this time of the pandemic, the question is, did God allow this pandemic, this plague? And if he did, why? What was it that we needed to learn? Have we learned that lesson? How long more will it go on? Are we trusting in the vaccine or are we trusting in God? Many people, I would dare to say most people, have turned their back on God and have become secular and humanistic, going after other gods and the occult, new age, and many other terrible things. But the word of God is clear. These things we have, whether it's pestilence, plague, or a pandemic, whether it's natural disasters, whether it's weather-related disasters. These are all because God has removed his hand of protection from us and is wooing us to repent and turn back to him before it's too late. Because the Lord delights in those who love him. 
He desires that none are lost. For he's a holy God and cannot tolerate wickedness or iniquity or sin. And through his permitted will, he allows us the consequences of our own sin. And if it is true that the pandemic was released by human beings, it's what we deserve for turning our back on him. Because if we were an obedient and prayerful, loving and servant-like body of Christ, we could have stood in the gap, repented and prayed, and the Lord would have delivered us like he did many, many times for Israel and the Israelites. And we forget that we're in a battle we're in a battle between the forces of light and darkness, good and evil, heaven, Satan, and his fallen angels. And in the second reading, Paul is talking about a man that he knew who 14 years ago was caught up into the third heaven. The third heaven is where God resides where his throne is and it was saying that he went to paradise and he was not allowed to speak of it because he was shown things which we are forbidden to talk of we have the first heaven which we can see above us the second heaven above it where the forces of darkness the principalities and powers where they reside and then the third heaven the biggest deceit and deception that has ever been perpetrated is when people believe that satan isn't real that the battle is a figment of our imagination the battle is for our minds for our wills, for our choices. But the battle is also for the image of God within us, in our very DNA, created in the image of God, man and woman was created. And we see the way in which society is trying to undo and change all those absolutes. But even though there are difficulties and challenges, Paul is saying here, I won't boast about the man who went to heaven. And I won't boast myself because I never went to heaven. I'd be a fool. But what I do do is I rejoice in my weakness because the Lord says, when you are weak, then he is strong. If we think we know or think we can do stuff in our own strength then we fail but if we're guided by the holy spirit and trust in the lord leaning not on our own understanding then the lord can turn that weakness into something amazing he says three times i pleaded that a thorn in my flesh, a messenger of Satan, which was sent to torment me, will be taken away. But God says, my grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. We don't know what that thorn in the flesh may be. It may be a weakness in his body, it could be anything. It could be something in his mind or it could be somebody. But as I've said so many times, these challenges and difficulties are opportunities for refinement and clarity, purifying. 
He then goes on, therefore I boast all the more gladly about my weaknesses so that Christ's power may rest on me. It's like if we take any of the credit, it is appalling. If we pray for somebody and they're healed, it's nothing to do with us. It's all to do with him. All we have done is been obedient to God's word to pray for the sick. And the Lord should not and will not share his glory with another. And we have to understand the sovereignty of God. And Ezekiel, when he was commissioned, was sent with a massively difficult job. But when he was given that task, the Lord provided him with the anointing and the skills to fulfill it. That is why Paul says, for Christ's sake, I delight in my weakness. You know, Ezekiel will have known, oh my goodness, how am I going to do this? In insults, hardships, persecutions, difficulties. And Paul had been through the mill more than once. For when I am weak, then I'm strong. So during this pandemic, what are we doing? Are we looking forward to things getting back to normal? Or are we repenting and praying and seeking the Lord and learning the lessons and drawing back to him and building our relationship with him? Not many of our religious leaders are doing that. They're silent on key issues. They can get involved in politics, but when it's to do with moral or things which are to do with biblical truths, they're silent. They will have to stand before the Lord for the consequences of this silence. But a watchman must warn when they see danger coming and blow the trumpet. And if somebody hears it and is saved, then the watchman is clear of any judgment. For if the watchman does not blow the trumpet to warn, or the people do not hear, then the blood is on their hands or on their own heads. And so I'm warning and challenging you. Get your heart and your life in order. I have to. Rebuild your relationship with Jesus. Rediscover your first love. And if you haven't had a first love with Jesus, find it before it's too late. Seek the Lord while he may be found. And it's interesting that in the gospel, Jesus is in his own town. He's speaking incredibly amazing things in the synagogue. They're talking about he even does miracles. But then they say, how can this be? He's the carpenter, which we've known for years. We know his mother and the sons and brother of James, Joseph, Judas, and his sisters are here and Simon. And they took offence. People who follow religious ways take offence. And we know that offence for Jesus was death on the cross. But Jesus said only in his hometown, amongst his relatives, his own house, is a prophet without honour. And often our families dismiss our faith because they think well I know what you were like when you were a little boy or a little girl you were terrible you did this 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 and this and they can't move on from it and so judgment from them continues from their memories and also if they 
realize that you've changed, it convicts them of their sin and they haven't changed. But Jesus went from town to town, from village to village, teaching. But from those important lessons, Jesus then sent the 12 out in twos and gave them authority over evil spirits. Remember, we're in a battle. But he gave them clear instructions. Take nothing with the journey except a staff. No bread, no bag, no money in your belts. Wear sandals, but not an extra tunic. Whenever you enter a house, stay there until you leave that town. And if any place will not welcome you or listen to you, shake the dust off your feet when you leave as a testimony against them. So they were given this commission as Ezekiel was given this commission, as we are given our commissions, and we have to rely on the Lord. And the Lord will provide bread and money, clothes, a place to stay. And if a man of peace or a woman of peace is there, that peace will stay with them. But if it doesn't, it will come back to you and you move on. And it will be a testimony against them that they did not accept you as an ambassador of Christ or the gospel from the Lord himself. And then it says, because they were obedient to these things, they went out and preached that people should repent. Often if we are oppressed or attacked by the enemy, it's because there is something that we have done or are or said, which has given the enemy a foothold in our lives and we have allowed him them into our lives and the only way to deal with that is to repent remove that legal foothold in your life so that the demons can be cast out but once they're cast out we have to be careful that we don't let seven worse ones in and keep repenting keep prayerful keep praying pre keep reading God's word building that relationship with Jesus and they anointed many sick people with oil and they were healed so obedience a calling authority if you like a mantle and following the instructions of our Saviour does amazing things. And these are the times that I'm looking forward to. But first we need to repent. So the Lord will forgive our sins as individuals and as a nation. And our sins are many. The blood of innocence. the things we have done and said against God's people in Israel. The wicked laws that have been passed, which are against God. The silence of our church leaders. The example of the church, which has diminished in its authority. I could go on. For if my people who are called by my name, that's the believers, will humble themselves and pray, turn from their wicked ways, then I will forgive their sins and heal their land. And my goodness, that healing will be the cleansing from pestilence and renewal and revival which we so desperately need 
and God has visited us on these islands many times and has not forgotten the blood of the martyrs but we have to humble ourselves and pray and seek his face repent deeply and then he will set us free from the judgment and consequences of our sin and heal our land amen let us pray and as we come to the lord we ask the lord to send a spirit of repentance that he will bring to mind the things that we are to repent of both on our behalf but also our family's behalf our ancestors behalf and our nation's behalf and that he will give us the anointing to repent deeply truthfully that the lord will forgive our sins and heal our land lord in your mercy hear our prayer we do pray for our queen and the royal family as the queen approaches her platinum jubilee we rejoice in her her dedication and covenant to serve our land, her witness to our Saviour and our God. We pray for her family going through turmoil at this time. We pray for our government and our Prime Minister for wisdom, knowledge and understanding and the challenges personally going through by those in senior leadership, particularly with their marriages. And we pray, mighty God, for a righteous uptake, uptick, and for reversal of some wicked laws that have been passed. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the nations of the world, particularly those where there is conflict. We pray for the tension between China and Taiwan and many nations who are gathered in the South China Sea, in the Central African Republic, in the Middle East. We pray for the peace of Jerusalem the only place on the planet where the Lord Jesus will return in glory, holiness, majesty and power. We also pray for our brothers and sisters in Christ who are persecuted for their faith. We pray, Lord Jesus, that you be with them to strengthen, encourage, bless, protect and provide for them. We praise you for the growth that is happening in many nations where persecution is hardest because it's life and death and their faith and relationship with you is real and not religion lord in your mercy hear our prayer we pray for those who are sick Pray for Richard, pray for his wife Ruth, pray for Craig in America and his sister Karen, pray for Jim in Scotland, pray for his wife supporting him, pray for Alan, pray for healing for his legs and his heart. Pray for Mick and his wife Mary, and Terry and Enid who are trying to support. Pray for Philip and his wife Beryl, for Mark Maidley, for Lindsay, for Peter and Mark.
Pray for Anne Williams and Mike Tierney in Whitford. For John and Sheila, Yvonne and Chris. Aubrey and Catherine. Doreen, Barbara. Baby William, James and Jess, the parents. Katrina. Teresa. Caroline. Jay. For your healing touch in body, mind and spirit. Set them free from all that ails them, but also transform them from the inside out, physically, spiritually, and in every way healed in Jesus' name. For by your stripes we are healed. We pray for those who are bereaved and we pray for the family of Shirley who passed away today. Pray for her husband Ken and pray for her friend Dorothy. We also pray for Vi, for their family and for Pauline in their sadness, that you will exchange their sadness for garlands of praise at peace, at last. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. God is love, and those who live in love live in God, and God lives in them. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Our next hymn is number 857, 857, I the Lord of Sea and Sky. Eight, five, I the Lord of Sea and Sky I have heard my people cry All who dwell in dark and sin My hand will save I who made the stars of night I will make their darkness bright
Blessed are you, Lord God, King of all creation. Through your goodness, we have this bread to set before you, which earth has given and human hands has made. It become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God, King of all creation. Through your goodness, we have this wine to set before you, which earth has given. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it become for us the cup of salvation. Blessed be God forever. The Lord is here. His spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is right to praise you, Father, Lord of all creation. In your love, you made us for yourself. When we turned away, you did not reject us, but came to meet us in your son. You embraced us as your children and welcomed us to sit and eat with you. In Jesus Christ, you shared our life that we might live in him and he in us. He opened his arms of love upon the cross and made for all the perfect sacrifice of sin. On the night he was betrayed at supper with his friends, he took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to them saying, take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Father, we do this in remembrance of him. His body is the bread of life. At the end of supper, taking the cup of wine, he gave you thanks. And said, drink this, all of you, for this is my blood of a new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. Father, we do this in remembrance of him. His blood is shed for all. And as we proclaim his death and celebrate his rising in glory, send your Holy Spirit that this bread and this wine may be to us the body and blood of your dear Son. And as we eat and drink these holy gifts, make us one in Christ, our risen Lord. And with your whole church throughout the world, we offer you this sacrifice of praise and lift our voices to join the eternal song of heaven, saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Let us now pray with confidence as our Saviour Christ has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. 
and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in the one bread. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, grant us your peace. Draw near with faith, receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he gave for you, and his blood which he shed for you. Eat and drink in remembrance that he died for you. And feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Amen. The body of Christ keep you in eternal life. The blood of Christ keep you in eternal life. Let us pray. Grant, O oh Lord, we beseech you that the course of this world may be so peaceably ordered by your governance that your church may joyfully serve you in all godly quietness through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And we say together, Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. Our final hymn is number 428, 428, Lord for the Years.
and the peace of God, which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with each one of you, all whom you love, cherish, and pray for this day and forevermore. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord in the name of Christ. Amen. So until next time, it'll be God bless you from me, Greg. Bye.